Alright, so we should be recording now, and just so you guys know, if you were to, you know, like, come off mic or something like that, just, you know, just so you know that it's, you know, I'm recording it so I can share it um, privately on YouTube with the people who couldn't make the call, but um, but just a couple things going uh, off of today at least. So, um, th- yesterday actually, um, I said it in the chat and I tweeted it as well, and, you know, I was kind of looking past today and what I mean by looking past today is uh, typically when you see on a Monday that there's no data um, oftentimes you kind of see um, PA that we got today and while there was uh, quite a bit of movement um, you know sporadically um, if we were to go and just take a look you know we were in in here live trading today watching it but you'll notice a lot of it was um, it was very choppy and not as straightforward as one would like. You know, this all looks good and great, but in terms of like how actionable is this? Like, you know, we're sitting in it, and you know, when it when is going to be the break, right? If you were trying to trade this entire move higher, you know, these wicks in either direction could have got you, right? So, how actionable is it going to be? And you know, it's just something that I guess um, through time um, and practice, of course, but um, you will notice that there are days where it's it's either better to not trade or there are days where it's pure and those are the days that you can really take advantage of and capitalize on right so if we're just to talk about a no day to day um really you know just think about i uh, you know the idea behind it like what what would make sense for you know i know a lot of people say mms and stuff like that but what what would make sense for quote unquote mms to do prior to a prior to a news event Right. Well, if I'm thinking about it, uh, to me, it would probably be something like gather liquidity so that when that move does come in, we can, you know, make somewhat of a a strong move. Right. I, I think that would be fair to say. And, you know, you might not agree, but, um, you know, it, do I really know that for certain? No, I don't. But that would just make sense. And that's one thing that we saw today. Um, we saw not only did we come down here get deep into discount take out a few lows in the process but throughout the day um you know these wicks here to me all this is doing is taking out a high retracing lower taking out a low go back higher take out another low to me this is just an accumulation of liquidity to prepare for what we see um entering tomorrow which is uh, a day-to-day so anytime we have a no news on a monday um typically i kind of sit back and you know i say it you know almost jokingly but not really i look for layups so you know what i would consider as a layup is something that absolutely completely uh lines up with my trading model which you know for those of you who've watched or been in the group for a while or watched any of the videos you know it's simply a shift in market structure a retracement either into a uh, discount bullish imbalance for a bullish market structure shift or a retracement into a discount bearish in a bearish structural shift. And then I look for, or I target, I should say, a run on highs or lows depending on if we are in a bullish structure or a bearish structure. Simple as that, that's it. So I really don't try and you know um, reinvent the wheel on days where I know that we don't have data. And the main reason for that is because, to me, the goal of a non-data day is typically just to accumulate orders, aka take people's money so that when the time comes and everybody sees the uh, you know quote-unquote large volume bar, um, Usually the day before, you can kind of have an idea of where that volume bar is coming from. Um, And that's, you know, uh, simply put, again, you know, never take anything anybody says, myself included, as gospel. Just go back and look, right? Um, You know, that would involve work, and I know a lot of people don't want to do work. But um, if you're genuinely curious about that, just go back and look. It can be very easily, um, you know, back-tested. By you know simply having an economic calendar, um, and you know that that can go for any. Um, I've been using that Forex Factory one, um, where it's, it'll show you like red folder data, which is you know typically market moving type data. Um, but I, I just you know try and keep an eye on that and see. Okay, we have data on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Great. Okay, so Monday probably not the best day for me. If there's a layup, something that lines up perfectly with my model, and something where the risk isn't 
astronomical on a day where I'm not really anticipating doing all that much, I'll take a shot at it. But if not, I'm going to, um, you know, kind of, what's the right word, I guess, Uh, let the market come to me in a sense, right? So um, if we're just going to look at it from an overarching idea, so basically, we'll take a look over here and, you know, not much new on the weekly chart. We got to let this kind of digest itself. But if we were to look at the daily, you'll notice that we have a bullish structure. Why would we consider this a bullish structure? We recently took out this high with this price run, low to high. Great. So now from this point, we haven't created an imbalance down. So the fact that we have not created an imbalance down to me is telling me that this range isn't necessarily set. Okay. And this goes for any time frame, any, any ticker, it does not matter. And again, everything that I say, please back test me on it. Check me on it. I promise. Um, you know, you will find something and you'll probably get better at a faster rate if you are to you know, use the information that you're either learning here on some videos or um, through your own practice. I I think that'll really expedite the process for a lot of people. But um, just just take a look. It doesn't matter what time frame it is. Until I see some sort of imbalance, I'm really not looking for that discount retracement. Are there times where we create that imbalance as we're heading down into discount of the range? For sure. So sometimes there's really not opportunity to trade it down in this range, right? Which would be like the 2.0 version to my model, right? If my regular model is something like this, right? Discount retracement, bullish imbalance, run for highs, right? Um, You know, there's still quite a bit of points here, right? So there could be an opportunity for us to trade it down here and get us into discount. But if I don't see that imbalance, I don't, I typically don't uh, trade this down. And even if I feel like the move is coming here, I don't do it. And the main reason for that is um, there's really no extra layer of uh, confirmation or, um, you know, really it's just confidence in myself that if I'm not being shown something from the market, I'm not going to try and make it up, right? Were there short opportunities today? Of course, right? If we were to look at a smaller time frame, absolutely. But I'm not really going to get in that mindset of, I'm looking for lower prices, get us down into 50%. Really, um, unless, of course, the hourly checks out with the daily and such. But until I see that imbalance down, to me, it's not a high probability trade. Okay. And again, this goes for any time frame you want. If we were to come over here and, you know, I just was clicking around this with CARP before um, we were talking about it, but okay, right? Look what you'll notice here. And I want you to use this in comparison with what we saw on NASDAQ, okay? So what was the start of the price run to take out these highs here, right? This low to that high, okay? You're going to notice that price retraces into a bullish imbalance very similarly to NASDAQ here, not quite in discount of the range, okay? See, 50% starts here. We did not get to 50% of our daily range. Okay, worth noting. Same thing here. Price gets down to discount of that range. Okay, no, not quite. Here's 50% right here. Okay, so ideally for me, my trade idea would be like this. Okay, I want to get down into here, right? Why do I look for it that way? Well, simply put, if we're buying longs in premium of a range, so over 50%, let's think about it. What would our target be? in within this specific range if price was trading at any point inside this range to me the target is going to be right here right our swing high or buy side liquidity right if the market is driven by liquidity and we've identified that as our draw on liquidity that's where we think price is going our weekly chart is bullish our daily chart is bullish our hourly chart is bullish um you know, we expect price to go higher, but why would I wait till it gets down here, right? And obviously in this situation, I missed it. So from that move from 934 up to 954, I had no skin in the game. Why? Why would that be? Why would I not try and take that trade? Well, can I justify it? Why price went higher? For sure. There's a bullish imbalance right here. No problem. Okay. But the reason why I don't look for that trade to play out is simply put here. Okay. From this point of our range, let's just say, you know, here's 50% of our range. Okay. Let's say where we were here was about 25%. Okay. So in this current trade, if I took it right here, right, I'm essentially risking 75% of the range. 
right? Because where does the trade go bad in this situation? And it's below the low of the candle that created the imbalance right here. Okay, so you have two here and you have one up here in premium, okay? So essentially, I'm risking 75% of the range for the trade to go bad, which in this case was about $25, $26 for a potential $20 to the upside. So I'm looking to make 25% of the range while risking 75% of the range, right? And you might say to yourself, oh, well, you have imbalances here. Why wouldn't you give that a try? Like three imbalances, that sounds like, you know, it's likely going to go in your direction. And while you're right, by trading options, not only is theta going to eat you, but in addition to that, um, this is what I call getting caught in quicksand, right? If you want to be as precise as possible, right, you want to use a specific imbalance to map your entire trade. Okay, entry off the high, stop loss below the low of the candle that created that imbalance. And then your take profit would be your liquidity, buy side liquidity or your swing high. Okay, so all of those things moving together, um, I, I need that to be precise as possible so that I'm not opening myself up to unnecessary risk. Right. How do people lose in this? How do people go extinct, right? It's because they have no risk management. And when the trade doesn't go their way, they say to themselves, oh, well, I have this imbalance right here. I'm going to use this one now as my new trade. Oh, wait, I have one more right here. I'm going to use this as my trade idea. And then before you know it, you're down here. Your entire contract is toast. All the money that you just put into that contract is probably closing in on zero. And you're probably all ticked off. All oh, these concepts don't work, this, that, blah, blah, blah. No, you just have zero risk management or discipline, right? That's the biggest thing. And that was something that I really needed to get better at because that was me, right? I would be the guy who is buying this imbalance and hoping to God that it went up in that, you know, so I can acquire 25% of the range while risking 75%. That was me when I was doing, when I first started going into this, uh, these concepts like that, I was doing this a lot. And um, after a while and after a few too many uh, zero DTE SPX contracts that go to zero, um, you kind of get a wake up call. Like this is not sustainable doing it in this manner. I need to have some sort of plan that I can repeat over and over again that will allow me to be not only as precise as possible, but also to be um, consistent with it, right? If it goes below where my, where my initial trade plan is uh, set up, I got to get out, right? It helps when you're trading futures and you could drag the stop loss right on screen. So you literally have, you could shut your mouse off and let it play out. Um, but with options, it's much more difficult because you actually have to manually go in there and close that trade and accept taking that loss. That is a really underrated part of this. Um, everybody's a, a fantastic trader when things are going their way. How are you as a trader when things are not going your way? Right? Because that's going to happen. It happens to everybody. Everybody's going to run into a rut. Some with longer ruts than others. You know, But how are you going to manage that? It's a part of it. You cannot go into this expecting, oh, I'm, I ain't going to lose. Ah, no way. Okay. So ready, as we run up higher here, you're going to notice obviously no 50% retracement. So for anybody who's been here a while and for those new, this is how I you know, map my range when we don't get that 50% retracement. Okay. So by us not retracing to 50%, all that's telling me is our current range is not set. Okay. So we did come back down into this imbalance, take out a few lows in the process to gather some liquidity in order for us to move price higher again. Okay. So now as price comes up into here, what do we notice? What was that first thing that I started this whole call off with? When you see an imbalance, that is often the market giving you a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, we're going to discount. And there it is, okay? There's your imbalance. Here's your retracement into discount of your range. Ready? Let's zoom in closer. See that? Just the tick. 50% bullish imbalance. Now we play for highs, okay? So now, rather than trading that, risking $26 to make 20 now I can look at it from this perspective, okay? Where should my stop loss be if I'm entering off of this imbalance right here, okay? Well, in reality, my stop loss should be the low of the candle that created the imbalance, which is at 970.27, okay? So at this point right here, I'm risking less than $4, okay? 
where should my entry be? Well, we do have this imbalance, but again, are we buying imbalances in premium? You could, but me? Mm -mm. Uh, not me. Okay. Where would I be buying off of this imbalance? 50%. So literally right at 50% of this, 931.12. Okay. So I'm risking $4 for a potential. Where is my target at this point? Okay. It's buy side, 954.24. So now I have a 23 point potential win while risking less than $4. To me, that makes way more sense. It's way more precise. It's way more sustainable if you do this long term than taking out, oh, I'm going to risk $26 to make 20 in this particular instance. Okay. Even if you're, you know, even if it was right and it goes up, to me, it just doesn't add up and it doesn't make as much sense. Those are typically the trades that I'm feeling a little bit more, even the trades off of 50%, I got to be honest, those are the ones where I'm like, ah, you know, that's a, you know, it's a little bit more of a, a stressor, right? Because you know that there is much more to the downside for your trade to, before your trade potentially goes wrong. Okay. So anyways, with all this being said, and I, and I should just, you know, note that prior to, um, you know, this, there were other, you know, factors that you could have used to aid in your um you know your decision making process here but simply put you know at this point we got our discount retracement you got your 50 percent bullish imbalance and you look for buy side liquidity as your uh you know your target in a sense so there your trade is completely mapped that's going to take out a lot of the emotional aspect to it and for people who are just entering or maybe not have heard me talk about this a lot I rarely talk about trading psychology, and the reason I don't do it as much is because I think people on Twitter and YouTube and all of this, and look, I'm not trying to say it's not important. I think people put too much of a premium on that, and the reason I say that is because a lot of the times if you go into the trade mapped out with your entire idea, where am I entering, where's my take profit, where's my stop loss, um, if you can go into the trade with all of that mapped out prior to entry, I bet you your psychology is going to be much better. I bet you you're not stressing the trade as much, okay? Especially if you're trading with a proper amount of money, right? If you have a $500 account and you're risking $500 in the trade, you're probably going to sweat that one out, right? But if you have a $50,000 account and you're trading a $500 contract, you're probably not sweating it all that much, right? Um, all of those little factors go into it. And again, I'm not trying to say that trading psychology is not important because it is. But to me, I think knowing what you're doing is much more important at first than psychology. Because especially after you see this and you see this stuff start to work over and over again, then it becomes a time where you say to yourself, okay, now it's about execution, right? I'm, I'm right on the moves a lot of the time. But the problem for me is that I'm cutting them too early. I'm not letting them play out. Or, uh, you know, maybe my stop loss, um, I got to be a little bit more tight as we move higher at a specific point, right? So those are little things that you can adjust later. And I think that can play into also uh, assisting in your psychology. But um, when you have a game plan, when you have an idea of where you think price is going to go, how you're going to manage that actively, to me, the psychological aspect of it, um, it really is taken out of it. Another component to psychology, which, um, or, or your game plan, I should say, that uh, it, it kind of annoyed me today was if we're looking at a trade setup, right, from a higher time frame, so something on a weekly time frame, okay? And we, let's just look at one for example, and I'm gonna use the exact one that we look at, that we were looking at, okay, not on the monthly, we'll go to the weekly. So Mara's been one that we've been hot on for a while, okay? Um, and, you know, see, this is not my first rodeo with Mara, just so that everyone's aware, uh, October 26th, okay? Um, but just, again, just to be straightforward and everything like that. But if we're looking at a weekly setup, okay, and nothing structurally changes on a weekly setup, right? And you cannot handle the day-to-day price fluctuations, you probably shouldn't be swinging things, right? I, I think that would be fair to say, right? If you see, and there's a specific point, and let's say, I don't know, let's say that you bought it right around here. So you're starting to see yourself go a little red. You have to understand that if this is a weekly setup, okay, and we are under the impression and we have the idea that price is going to go here, right? This is where we want price to go. 
If that's the case, these day-to-day -day fluctuations should probably not matter. And if they matter, it's either your contracts are too short dated, you don't trust in the concepts, and you don't trust the process, or four, you don't trust that if the trade finally does give it up and it goes against you, you don't uh, you don't feel comfortable in yourself managing your risk properly. Though that's one of four things that I'm f firm about. Okay, and one thing that I I personally prefer to do on say uh, really any chart that I'm ever looking at is look at it and make sure that it checks out on a higher time frame like the weekly okay and the reason for that is especially if we're going to be looking at it from a long-term perspective which a lot of the the stuff that I do look at I am looking at it from that perspective because to me if it looks good on the weekly chart and the higher the time frame the higher the probability of success I'm probably going to be okay now a difficult caveat to this, and I'll give you all of this, is that if you're trading with options, it does make it much more difficult because you are fighting the clock. Okay, I buy shares in a lot of these, so I'm not always as worried um, overall and or on a long duration because I know that I'm not fighting time, right? And I know with options, of course, you are. But if you cannot handle those day-to-day -day fluctuations in price, you probably didn't get enough time, or you probably shouldn't look at setups from a weekly perspective you can drop down to an hourly if you want and we can look for hourly trade setups and that way you don't have to get that much time they're probably cheaper contracts but what is a higher probability of success a weekly time frame chart or a hourly chart so can you take a loss is is that something that you feel comfortable doing because as you go down in time Okay, whether this is an hourly, whether this is a 15 minute, whether it's a five minute, whether it's a one minute, and I'll be the first one to tell you when I'm trading on a one minute time frame as my entry point, those are typically my least successful trades. And this goes from anything from uh, weekly top down, right? As I go smaller in time frame, that's typically where the success rate or the win rate of these ideas gets lower, right? And you know, in addition to that, I mean, structurally, right, we're looking at something like Mara. And no, no one said anything to me about this. I just saw some grumblings about it. And, you know, I, I just had to say this because this is part of the reason why I don't share ideas and I'm not doing it anymore ever um, is for this reason, right? One, there's no trust in the process, right? I, listen, you can go in the swings. You go on Twitter in my pinned tweet. You've been in here for calls all this time. I think in the duration, at least since last summer, I think there's maybe been three clunkers that I've thrown out there. And and I'm not saying that as a conceited thing or anything like that, but I think there's been three. And I know I don't shoot from the hip all the time, but we go through stocks and tickers every day for a hundred, let's say a hundred tickers. We go through them pretty much, you know, at least three times a week. So multiple different price runs we've gone through and i i'm off the top of my head i'm thinking there was three that were clunkers out of all of those so when i see that and this is not a trust in the process to me that just tells me one you know you're not at a point where you're formulating your own ideas without external help right and if that type of stress is kind of weighing down on you then one you probably shouldn't be swinging it two you probably uh have too much money involved in one thing Three, um, you know, you, you might not have enough time on the contract, right? Again, if we're looking at it from a weekly perspective, look how long this weekly setup took, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six weeks to set a range after our discount, we're on week three, okay? Let's look at the previous one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 weeks to set a range, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 to base and discount, and then one, two, three, four five six to take out your high okay so again if you're looking at it from a weekly perspective this could take time right we're not looking at it from an hourly where we would anticipate price to move pretty quickly to our draw on liquidity right this can absolutely take time to occur but that was one thing that i saw today and i was just like i gotta make sure that uh we got a uh, we got this on on track and we're we're on the mark with this because that kind of stuff drives me nuts right and you know obviously that's not you know, my goal is not to uh, ever tell people to do this, do that, um, or anything like that. But I know that's what people do. And of course, it's, uh, you know, coming from a, a good place 
where I, I do share it, but again, click on the Swings channel. The whole idea behind the Swings channel is for uh, as, as a learning thing, right? There's two people in here, at least two people in here, who took the one that I posted in there most recently. And while I'm so happy for you, I really am, um, if you were to lose on that trade, I would, you know, I, I don't really want success for your wins. I most definitely don't want success for your losses. So it's something that, you know, just because I see it and I like it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to see it and you have to like it, right? That's not the point of it. The point is to see the process on how I'm trying to find a very specific pattern or model that repeats over and over and over again, right? And notice how I'm not shooting at the hip with all of these different ideas all the time and it's mostly because i want to look for the most high probability when i'm doing that right and that's why going back to what i was saying before i feel like uh, collectively and uh, since july because july was when i really started to focus on this group but since then you know i don't think i've just been shooting clunkers all over the place and i think that's not only because one i'm unless it's a, a I feel really good or a high probability. I'm not going to put it out there, but two, because it is a very strict and strategic model on how I base all of my trades off of not just the weekly swings or something like that. Even the most refined and, you know, tight five minute setups, I try and be as precise as possible so that my success rate can be as high as possible because no one likes to lose. And when you lose a lot in a row, it can weigh down on you. And when it weighs down on you, you start to stray away from things that have worked for you in the past. And then ultimately you get, uh, shat on and buried. So, um, but that was just, uh, that was just one, you know, thing I saw today and I was just like, all right, it's a Monday. There's no data. It's probably going to be a pretty shitty day in terms of your indices, which it was. And Cad Bain made a good point. Um, he's also in here. I'm not sure if he's on the live right now, but he made a good point. And he said, you know, he's noticed that these days where we have no data on a Monday, they tend to be better individual names or individual ticker name days versus what we see on the indices. And he, he, He's probably onto something. I can tell you for certain that today in the indices, while you know it's very easy to look back at it now and say, "Oh, look, this was a smooth day, man. We got into that daily bullish uh, imbalance right there. Where is it? Hold on. This is the weekly. Here it is. Oh, we got into the daily bullish imbalance and we bounced to close out the day. That's great. And you know, ultimately, we did. You know, while we were on live, we we felt like the draw was higher and everything like that. So, um, I wasn't. You know, I, I think overall on sides, but again, even though we were on sides and we had an idea that price was going to go higher, to trade something like NASDAQ or to trade multiple contracts on anything that's moving like this, it's going to be stressful. And a lot of the time, it's probably better off to just not even be a part of that, right? Even if you are on the right direction, just based on the, uh, you know, just the roller coaster ride that I, to me, you really don't need to, to be a part of. Um, and, you know, thankfully I was able to scoop up a couple bucks on NASDAQ. And the worst part about this whole entire situation was that I literally got stopped out right here. And then the next candle absolutely tanked. But it's a part of it and it's all right. I, I, I survived the day, made a couple bucks. And now I know it only takes one trade, one trade tomorrow. And I'm set. Whatever I did not make today, it's no big deal. Um, so that would be uh i guess the the second um overall um idea that i wanted to talk about tonight and i got one more but before that let's just load up just if anybody has any questions or comments or anything um just drop them in the sidebar now and it's just so i can um make a you know, make sure I get to them at some point. Um, review arm made good money today. I really wish I got long on discount. Okay, so um, let me. Uh, we'll do that one shortly. Um, I'm just looking who's in here. I see. I see a lot of people who are in here a lot. I think I'm going to show you guys uh, something that I think will be really helpful. Um, if you're trading spy. QQQ. I know. I'm sorry. It's not like a individual stock thing, but um, you really need the pre-market data for this. But I'm going to show you anyways, because since I started doing this, um, again, it was something that I wasn't 
you know, I, I, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't BS before I started using it. It's not something I created, so don't get it twisted, but it's something that I heard about. Um, I watched some videos on it. I started instituting it, and um, I'll tell you that it is extremely helpful. Um, and I think it can add a nice little wrinkle to, you know, again, this could be your model, what I'm about to show you right now. But let's do arm quick because Carp's got to head out. But um, so uh, weekly, solid, no discount retracement, but that's okay. We don't know what the draw on liquidity is. It is a relatively new name that came out here. Yeah, so um, we talked about arm while we were on live for a little bit today. And here's the. Uh, the thing that I like about ARM is that ultimately we just we gapped up today, so that would be a bullish volume imbalance, right? We can look towards that level uh, as a support level moving forward, right? But the the part that I like the most about the ARM setup for upside is that we have something called a, a potential, and by potential, I think that's really the only way you can preface this. But um, let's put it this way: if price comes here. I'm fairly certain price is going to go here. Okay, why do I say that? This is what we would call a low resistance liquidity run. Okay, and you could see this on any chart, any time frame, doesn't matter, right? You could be looking at an hourly chart for AMD. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. If you see something that looks like this, right? Multiple swing highs in a row without any sort of imbalance on a higher time frame in the middle. Because um, what really are these? The relative equal highs, right? So for at each one of these highs, what what had to have happened here? Somebody had to go short, right? Okay, what had to have happened here? Somebody had to have gone short. What had to have happened here? Somebody had to have gone short, right? So for each one of those, that's a pool of liquidity here, pool of liquidity here, pool of liquidity here. Okay, um, and if you're shorting something, what what's what form is your stop loss going to be? It's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be like, you know, a, a buy stop, right? So in order to uh, get out of that short position, you're gonna have to buy that, right? So if we're running up and through, and we're accumulating more orders as buy orders to clean up stop losses, price should run through, rip through pretty smoothly, okay? Um, just to justify uh, where we kind of whacked out today um sloppy but nonetheless you do have that bearish volume imbalance right there and we did sweep this high right here okay so you know ideally um you know from this perspective here let's just see here and uh yeah i mean i think you could break this down into multiple different ideas i think the gap itself that could be a trade idea right entry somewhere inside this gap with your stop loss below the low of the candle that created that imbalance higher you have your target price being up here essentially right um again low resistance liquidity run we would want price to kind of slice through that no problem and go quickly um but uh yeah no i i, I like this one a lot so just based on your my overall uh setup here it's um I would be shocked if price doesn't go here, but again, at what's the time component to this, right? Low, high, discount, bullish imbalance, check, run up here. What do we run into? Some sort of imbalance that's below a daily level, okay? So as we're just accumulating lower, 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 this is all liquidity here. We did not sweep sell side. That's one eh about it, but... Um, do we or do we have enough liquidity in order to move higher? I wish it would have swept that. That would have created a bullish breaker right here. And from that point, I would have said, no doubt or I'm in. But um, but yeah, I mean, even if you want to walk this up and you want to take it as a, uh, you know, a, I guess, like broken down into potentially multiple ideas, as long as you could take a loss, I mean, you could really use any of these imbalances as your guiding factor in this this situation, right? And this is on the daily, of course. So, I mean, if we were to look at the hourly, let's see if we can be even more precise with it. Um, wow, these are old levels here. Let me just clear them out. Sorry. But um, let's just see our most recent run. Okay, shifted here. Okay, low to high, no discount retracement. 
nope, 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 nope. Okay, so we do have a pretty big range here on the hourly time frame. Um, even with having this large range like this, how else could I play this? I could say to myself, okay, is this going to be a higher probability or a lower probability? Lower. Right? I'm taking a very short time duration range here by saying, what was the run that took out these highs here? From that low to that high, discount retracement, bullish imbalance, I would anticipate price to run to 143, knowing that I would have to stop myself out of this trade at 134. Does it make sense to make $4 for uh, you know, potential $5 loss? That's just all things you gotta, gotta weigh in order to try and be as precise as possible when trading with size or with a vehicle that is leveraged. Um, so that that's that one. Uh, carp. I like it. I think time is the side. Why did you take that short during midday? Um, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, really, um, the reason I took the short was because I still think we can go a little lower, to be honest. So, here's one, I guess... I can justify this trade and tell you that I'm an idiot for trying that, but I could also tell, like, walk you through the, the entire process. So, okay, here's our range, and this is our range dating back to uh, last Wednesday's um, FOMC and minutes and Powell and everything like that. So if we have our low here that took out these highs, again, this is a shorter time duration range because in reality, you know, I to me, this is my real range, but again, you know, I... I think I can try and uh, take trades on a smaller time frame I'm gonna do it um, but just by looking at it and look this is the hourly and I'm using smaller time frame but the hourly is what really dictates the trade idea for me um, but I'll explain to you where uh, I went wrong but anyways here's your range right what did we say at the beginning of this this entire call what do I wait for in order to play for downside in a bullish range bearish imbalance Ding! there it is okay price retraces back up into it what was the price run that took out that low right here to create that bearish breaker? Was it this one? Nope, we didn't get to 50%. No range set. No range set. Uh, range sets, discount bearish imbalance, run through lows, my model is complete. There it is. Okay. So by doing that, you're also going to notice that in our overarching or higher time frame, quote unquote, range, right? We're down here in discount, right? bullish imbalance bodies have held here's two reasons why i thought we could go lower and sell off to end the day one uh i think we're going to see tuesday low of the week so what that is that's a weekly profile so if you go into the syllabus um in the group and you scroll up you might have to scroll up a little bit um after this i'll highlight it and just add everyone to it but weekly profiles um and this is something i actually want to keep track of like starting now, I might just make it its own little thing, uh, own little channel, and we'll track it each week and see what profile we get, and maybe we'll start to see um, some sort of pattern where one week we see uh, Wednesday reversal, that leads us into the next week, 90% of the time the next week we see a Tuesday low of the week or something like that. We'll see if we could pick up on little tendencies like that. But out of all of those profiles that you see on there, that's really uh, what the market's going to paint like every week. And I believe there's 12 of them. Um, but the one that we've been seeing recur the most over the last since October has been Tuesday low of the week, right? Early in the week, we usually see these heart attack moves to the downside. Everybody gets bearish. And then ironically, we run, we run up and run through highs to close out the week. So that was overall my idea, right? Not, and I'm not just doing this blindly. I'm also going into it with the idea. Okay. So what was the price run that took out that low? Okay. I know I was playing with fire just a little bit. And I'll explain. So this was the run that took out that low. Why am I playing with fire trying to short this, right? We did get into discount right here, okay? Why do I feel like we can go get deeper into discount? Well, here's one. One reason I, th I thought that this would be an ideal play, and again, this is, uh, you know, just a couple reasoning uh, as to why I would have done that. So you're going to notice, if you look at this candle right here, we were points away from getting into this imbalance and we did not 
Okay, so that was one part of it. Okay, huge wick, bodies, uh, wicks give you the heart attack, bodies tell the story. But the fact that we were as close as we were and didn't get down to it, that didn't sit right with me. That's one. And two, the second reason why I thought there would be a short opportunity, which ultimately we got, and I turned out to be about five minutes uh, too soon, or one more high too soon, um, was because I, ultimately I think it would make uh, – you know, again, does this necessarily have to happen? 100% absolutely no. I think it would make much more sense for us to have or to start to retrace into here, which is about 170 points lower. Get us into discount of our daily range into this bullish imbalance to send us higher. And, you know, ultimately, I really want the market to, like, get going, create some sort of imbalance higher on not just the daily time frame, but a weekly time frame, and that can kind of set us up for a little while longer because as you can see here, the only thing that we formed recently was a bullish order block. That's it. So it really hasn't been all of that all that much of uh, you know anything to make us feel like, okay, continuation, no problem, right? There's nothing that's told us that we should look for lower on a weekly time frame, no imbalance to the downside, right? Again, that's kind of the uh you know idea behind this whole uh call tonight but um but again i i thought there could be could have been a retracement to get us down into discount of the daily and get deeper into the hourly imbalance which again really close to here but not quite we also took that high right here so we swept liquidity in a bearish imbalance that was in discount of a bearish range so everything lined up and ultimately i gotta be honest i think we're going here first uh, to be honest, I think we're going to come back down to 414 to get yesterday's low. Um, but it wasn't the prettiest of days, obviously. And, it, you know, the setup to me, it really wasn't all that bad. But the, what what did me in was, again, and this wasn't like I was sitting in this trade for forever. But, you know, um, ultimately, um, I'm here playing it. I had the new week open gap. We took buy side right here. That purple level... Um, I actually, I don't think I have enough time to show you guys. I'll show you guys tomorrow um, what what that means. But um, we got up into the new week open gap, and initially I was correct, right? Um, and unfortunately, we made one more high, swept liquidity one more time. Actually, tagged uh, my purple level here, which again, I actually I'll just say it, but I'll exp I'll show you guys how it works tomorrow but this is uh this is your london kill zone high it's a a thing that I, again i've been using this for about three and a half months and um it's just a, a nice little wrinkle to add in and you, i feel like i have the upper hand um when i see new york the new york session price takes out a lower the high uh, i have a pretty good idea of where price is going next after that and again, it's unfortunately, it's just uh, for the indices, you know, I'm not getting 4 a.m. or I'm sorry, not 4 a.m., 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. data on anything because the market's closed. But um, it's just uh, algorithmic, I guess you could say. But anyways, I was just one, one too short. I had a great entry off the new week open gap, got a nice run down, but ultimately did get stopped out prior to this done so it is what it is it's fine um part of the game but that was uh kind of the breakdown there was a lot of things that uh lined up in um confluence um i'm reading the message right now Oh, yeah, for sure. So um, somebody who's listening just was saying that um, they learned a model um, by watching lives and then pulling up, you know, whether it was Weeble, TradingView, and following along. Um, and then you can write a side note of what you're seeing on your own chart. I think that's the best way to do it, right? But the biggest takeaway is anything that anybody says, whether it's me whether it's uh, Joe from live, whether it's any of these geniuses on Twitter, 
you should always be able to back test what they're talking about if they if you can't do it it's it's whack right and ultimately you know i i hope i hope the best brainwashing that i've done is to convince you guys that you can do this without anybody's help you don't need anyone you really really don't and i think you're actually going to get better when you don't look towards anyone myself included um you know you know look you might see it a different way you might be looking at it from if you just take my model in a sense you might be saying oh i think we're going to go lower here because uh, or for whatever reason and i say oh yeah i, I think we're going to ultimately go higher right you might say oh well we don't agree like why would you think that and if you start to overthink that right you might be looking to play that short to get us down into discount and by me saying i think we're ultimately going higher maybe i'm you know i'm thinking that i think we're going to go to discount and then run higher or something like that like you know i i guess semantics the words and stuff like that but i don't I don't think you should really let anybody else's ideas or words, you know, of course you can value others' opinions and, you know, I know at some point I'll value everybody's and stuff in here, um, you know, especially the people who are in here. You guys are in here all the time putting in the work and stuff. But, um, but again, I think at the end of the day, especially when you lose, right, because winning is winning's easy, uh, you know, winning, it don't, don't matter who told you about it. You won, you're happy for yourself and all of that. But when you lose and you start to say to yourself, oh, why didn't I just fucking listen to myself? That's that's even more painful than losing and, you know, when you took your idea. Remember, you guys put in a lot of work to this. It's not like you – and maybe – I don't – I'm not saying that anybody here does. But maybe you cheat yourself and you outwardly say you do all you got to do. You study, you do the work, you chart every night, you do this, that. Maybe you don't, and uh, the only person that knows that is you, and uh, that's sitting deep down in there, and uh, it starts to come out when you start to lose, and that's when those blow-ups happen, but those can be totally avoided, and I know everybody doesn't have all the time in the world, but if you, um, you know, just a, a little bit of time, if you could spend a little bit of time and just prep for your next day, um, I think it takes a lot of the stress and thinking out of execution, and then your execution is going to be better as a result of it. Um, do I ever look to re-enter after getting stopped? I do. Yeah. Yeah. It happens from time to time where I, I get stopped and then maybe the next time it's, it's a good one or something like that. The problem with this was here. Um, I, I just didn't really feel like sitting on the, the screen anymore. It was three o'clock. I usually don't really do all that much during power hour, sour hour, whatever you want to call it. Um, I used to, and, uh, Maybe a little PTSD from losing on some uh, zero DTE SPX. So I don't really look too much after the 2 o'clock silver bullet, 2 to 3. And then after that, I'm, I usually kind of call it quits. It's even in the morning. You know, the last couple of times we've hopped on here for live trading, I've, I've kind of just said, eh, I'm done around 11.30. And that's usually the lunch session. I'm not really all that interested in that. I do look for the 2 to 3 hour, but um, that's about it. Or I'll set some alerts during that time so that if price does come to a specific point i can come back to the screen for it but I, i'm trying to like not sit here all the time I, I don't think you need to do that to be good at this so um but yeah that was just a time thing there d dot um it, it played out it was just i was wrong on time so it didn't work out in my favor but that's okay um because all <laughs> it only takes one takes one trade and uh you know for some it could set up your week you know one trade could set up a month you know it it has the capability to do so so um but if it's not if it's not going to be there forcing it is it's difficult i mean one of the we were talking i was talking with ryan about it today actually when we were in the live trading and um you know we we both kind of agreed that it's graduation when you start to see the writing on the wall early. And I know that sounds so stupid and like it's very subjective, but when you can kind of get a feel for the day being a shit day, you know, a, as it's kind of transpiring, that's like graduation. I think that's when you really have a good grasp on things. You're not forcing trades in shitty conditions. Um, you have the ability to just say, okay, I'm good. Right. And just walk away. Um, and you know, 
I, I don't, I don't like try and like post like the, the money wins or anything to wow any of you. Cause I know you don't care. And I, you know, you're all strangers. So, you know, friends through the internet, of course, but strangers. So it's not like I'm trying to showboat in front of strangers, but I just, the reason I do post them when I, when I get them like that is just to show like, it's literally one trade and you can make like, you know, even if it's on the lower end, you make 800 bucks on one trade. It's like, damn. All right. That's it. That took 10 minutes, right? So you don't need to sit here all day. You don't have to push a million buttons. Um, usually that's when I feel like things do, um, I don't want to say go poorly for me, but I will give back some when I do that. Um, because I, instead of taking the A plus top notch setup, I'm like settling and it'll be a B and, you know, maybe I'll be like half in it, meaning like half paying attention, half maybe typing to you guys or watching TV or playing a game or something on my phone or computer. Like, I don't know. I just feel like it kind of sets you up for a poor mentality if you're just like, all right, I'm making X amount today. I want to win 15 trades. I want to do this. Like, um, I think that like graduation to become a professional is to really, um, have that ability to, turn it off and just say, yo, this, this ain't it. I'm good. I don't need to sit here and watch this. Um, maybe you'll miss one, maybe not, but all it takes is one. You don't need much else. So, um, all right. I see uh typing right now, but, um, this, I'm going to say it now, like last call, you don't have to be an expert by any means on any of the topics, imbalances, market structure, liquidity. You don't have to be an expert, but just have a good idea of those. So if you got to watch some video or something like that, maybe practice it a little bit. Um, cause tomorrow I want to show you guys something that can literally be your trading model. You could abandon everything that I've said ever in the past. If you wanted, um, to use what I'm going to show you tomorrow, I just use it in, uh, addition to, my model. Um, and I think it, it's much more of the time component to things, but that can really set you up, um, on the good side. Would you still consider the new week open gap bearish if it filled previously? Yes. That, that level is bearish to me until we get above it. Uh, Goonie. I think that's just an, uh, that's an algorithmic level that is, um, showing us, um, what's what's the right word um it, it's not no acceptance in that specific level i should say right so um we have not yet accepted over that we haven't accepted over the weekly open so all of those lining up um that's what that kind of tells me and you mean at the end of the week correct um what do you mean at the end of the week Oh, oh, so the new week open gaps, again, this is not something that I've, it's not my thing, but, or my concept, but, um, you know, from listening to ICT, uh, that is, he, he keeps on eight. So, uh, he keeps on eight previous new week open gaps, or he looks towards eight, I guess you could say. Um, and there would be valid for eight weeks again, for whatever reason, I think eight, whatever it is, it, it's close to two months, right? Eight times, uh, yeah, eight times seven. So yeah, you're pushing two months there, but yeah, no problem. Yeah. So I, I mean, uh, again, at this point where we currently sit, the fact that we're b beneath weekly open, right? So this week, I believe we gapped up and almost immediately went below it, but, um, that direction is, it doesn't mean as much to me now, it, other than the specific, uh, level that it's, uh, occupying right now. So the high of the new week open gap, the low of the new week open gap, um, and the area in between, obviously that right now to me is a bearish level that we're showing, uh, um, uh, what's the word? Um, we, there's no accept, acceptance, right? There's no, uh, you know, we're, we're not being accepted over that level. So to me, although it's filled and everything like that, does that necessarily mean that price can't move through it? No, I'm just, I would just 
again, view it as some sort of resistance level moving forward. Even here, we gapped up, filled it immediately, ran through, but you'll look just to see like, you know, it, the efficacy of this level at this point. So gap up immediately through rejection, rejection, acceptance, bounce, 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 melt through rejection, right? We came down through it, retraced back up into it, rejected it, rejected it again, right? Because look, we could say all we want, like, oh, look, like, yeah, we rejected that fair value gap. And why you'd be right, like, that's even more precise, right? So um, there's your rejection again. And then like, again, you know, so it is a uh, very, the precision on that is elite. Um, and for whatever reason, um, it's an algo thing, but. It, it does play like this very often and again he uses previous eight of them so that would be 56 days um so about two months worth of new week open gaps and a lot of the time you'll notice that like you know if we're moving like this like i don't know the new week open gap from this week is probably you know even if it was eight weeks away probably pretty irrelevant because we're like a thousand points higher than it you know what i mean and that, that was happening for a long time here. That concept, I didn't have to bring it up at all because we really were just ripping higher every week. So we, we weren't really coming back down and interacting with any of them other than the current one. So, but all right, um, I'm going to cut it here. So if anybody uh, has any questions about anything, feel free to reach out. But uh, if not, I will catch everybody uh, tomorrow. I'll be on live trading again in the morning, probably around 10 o'clock. So I'll see everybody.